Welcome back, Giants fans. Week number four preview here. Giants at Saints. Uh, I'm doing this video late, so I'll try to have it up by like, you know, I guess late Friday night, early Saturday morning here. Uh, the Yankees just came off a tough loss, but I'm still like wide awake. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll just do this video now. So the key injuries here for the Giants, of course, Sterling Shepard hamstring out. Darius Slitton has a hamstring injury. He's out. Uh, of course, Blake Martinez is done for the year. And Ben Bredesen, he has not been announced out yet, I believe. I haven't seen it, but there's a good chance he he misses because I don't think he practiced on Friday. So we'll find out. But um, I think the Giants want to rotate that left guard spot anyway. So it's not like the biggest loss in the world. For the Saints, left tackle Teron Armstead, who... You know, Armstead's a very solid player. I don't think he's been a top five tackle at, at one point in time, but like he's always around that top 10, top 15, you know, probably a top 10 left tackle at certain points. Like he's a good player. So definitely missing an important piece there. And their center, Eric McCoy has a calf injury. I don't know if they've been ruled out yet, but I don't think they practice on Thursday. Haven't checked if they practice Friday or not, but if those, if those guys miss, those are definitely some big uh, you know, key injuries there for the Saints offensive line. I believe Cesar Ruiz, who's now in his second year, moves to center. I'm not going to act like I know who the backup left tackle is for the Saints, but I guess we'll see on Sunday. So, yeah, Jameis Winston has 276 total passing yards in the Saints wins this year. So the Saints have been off to a weird start this year. They came out week one and demolished the Packers at home, although they played in Jacksonville because of the hurricane, but they beat the Packers like 38-3. Then they played the Panthers, who, yeah, they might be legit this year. I don't know, but they got, you know, beaten down by the Panthers in Week 2, and then they came out in Week 3 and had another really good game against the Patriots. So it's hard to gauge and figure out who the Saints are right now, but I just, I always get behind a Sean Payton coach team. Even when Drew Brees has been out in recent years, they always find a way to win games, whether it was Teddy Bridgewater or Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston now. Sean Payton's a winner. Yes, he only has one Super Bowl in New Orleans, but the guy wins games and he's an awesome play caller and always gets the most out of his quarterback. So I'm not going to bet against that. But the reason I put this in here is because the Saints don't want Jameis Winston throwing the ball 40, 50 times a game. They don't want that. The Saints recipe for success and based on what they've done so far this year, is having a balanced rushing and passing attack. Honestly, trying to rush the ball even more. Like Alvin Kamara has had a big uptick in his carries so far this year. I think he had 24 carries last week against the Patriots. That's not like Alvin Kamara. Like back in the days when Latavius Murray was there and Mark Ingram, um, you know, he was more of like a 15, 16, 13 carries per game type guy. But now with not much of a backup there, they have a guy in Tony Jones who's a pretty decent player, um, but not at the status of a Mark Ingram or Latavius Murray. They're giving Alvin Kamara basically all he can handle there. Not having Michael Thomas, who is their wide receiver one, kind of puts even more on the plate for Alvin Kamara. But really, the way the Saints want to beat you is they don't want to throw the ball a ton of times with Jameis Winston. They want to kind of limit those mistakes, as we know, because Jameis Winston has even shown this year, despite some of the low passing attempt games, he can still make a mistake he threw a touchdown pass last week when a Patriots defender was you know dragging him to the ground and he threw a ball up for grabs that could have been picked but it was a touchdown so I guess you know it's it's good on Jameis sometimes to be risky but oftentimes uh it does get him in trouble so he he definitely can make those mistakes but the Saints don't want him passing the ball a bunch of times I will say that um stopping Alvin Kamara this is honestly my biggest concern about this game and I'll explain why first off Alvin Kamara is one of the best running backs in football um you know it's hard to call him a running back because he does so much more in the receiving game like he has incredible balance he's shifty as hell he's fast he's a great receiver uh there's so much about Alvin Kamara to love about you know as a player and the Giants have had so much problems or so many problems with players like that and even worse than Alvin Kamara the Giants can't cover Boston Scott when they play the Eagles. They can't cover J.D. McKissick when they play Washington. They couldn't cover Cordero Patterson when they played the Falcons last week. What is Alvin Kamara going to do to the Giants? Like, I, it's keeping me up at night right now. Like, I don't know what is going to happen on Sunday, but I have my, I have a lot of concerns about what Alvin Kamara is going to do to this defense. And it's just, it, it concerns me because Kamara is such a great talent. They use him the right way. They give him a bunch of touches, as I just mentioned. And the Giants have had such problems just taking care of these shifty guys uh, in the flat. Like, they have a tough time tackling guys like that. So it's going to be an issue, in my opinion. I hope they find a way to, to kind of minimize what Kamara can do but the Saints love getting him the ball and he will make guys miss so that's a, the number one concern and the Giants are averaging as a defense they're giving up 4.6 yards per attempt 
it's not that good. You know, it's probably like, I don't know, probably in the bottom 15 or so. Like it's probably the bottom half of the league. It's not the worst, but it's also not a good number either. So the Giants run defense has not been that great so far. Now, as for the Saints defense, they are a very, very good unit. I think in that division, the Buccaneers defense gets the most attention because they they played the big games in the playoffs and the Super Bowl, of course. But the Saints defense may be even better. Like they they are at that level. They have so many names on that defense. You know, Cam Jordan, Marcus Davenport, um, Marshawn Lattimore, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. They have uh, two really good safeties over there. Like they have a really good roster. Demario Davis at linebacker, great defense over there. So that concerns me as well. And plus, you know, you put a great defense against a Giants offense that. As I said in a, in a previous video about Jason Garrett, they haven't been much better this year. They're averaging like 1.2 more points than they were last year. Yes, it's been three games. I will preface that once again, but the Giants are not off to a great start offensively. I have to say they had that really good offensive showing in week two, but week one was a huge letdown against the Broncos and week three of, against the Falcons. Putting up 14 points against that defense is not acceptable. And if the Giants put up 14 against the Falcons at home, I get every week is different, but the Saints defense may legitimately be two times better than the Falcons. Some may argue even more. So what are we going to do on the road against a Saints defense that is very legit? Like I have my concerns about facing that defense. Anyway, New Orleans has a number two defense in the NFL against the run so far this year. That's scary. We barely can run the ball as it is unless it's Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones has to have a big running week. I'll go into the keys of the Giants, you know, potentially winning this game later. But I think Daniel Jones using his legs is a big part of that. And their secondary is loaded with talent once again. They have a safety in Marcus Williams. They have Malcolm Jenkins. They have, as I said, Marshawn Lattimore, Chauncey Gardner johnson um, I think Brian Poole is on IR. But they have a bunch of guys on that secondary over there in New Orleans. Uh, they have Paulson Adebo, who's a rookie that I like coming out of Stanford. So I don't know how he's been doing this year, but I liked him coming out. So they have names over there for sure. It is scary. And I think, you know, um, there's a, ch I mean, you know, Daniel Jones has that long streak of not throwing an interception. If he can get out of this game without throwing a pick, I would be impressed, but I do want the Giants to be more aggressive. So it's kind of like, I don't know, a, a, one of those catch 22 type things where I want them to push the ball down the field, but the Saints have a very tough secondary and defense overall. So I don't know how you really are supposed to beat these guys, especially with the injuries we have this game would have been a lot better if Shepard and Slayton were healthy maybe not you know Slayton as much obviously but if we had those guys I would have felt better about this but for the Giants you have to utilize Kadarius Tony. This has to be the game. We're now four weeks into the season. There was three preseason games. You had all training camp. I know Tony was absent for a lot of that. I get it. But I feel like Tony's now at a point where there are two in, uh, two injuries in front of you on the depth chart with Slayton and Shepard, as I mentioned. You still have Kenny Galladay. Um, the Giants are at the point where, where Colin Johnson's going to get some key snaps for this team. Like I think you have to put Kadarius Tony in the slots for majority of the snaps. I don't know who the Giants slot receiver is going to be on Sunday most of the time but in my opinion it should be Kadarius Tony see what he can do if he if he fails he fails you know you have to put him out there I, I like what I've seen from him so far he had two touches I believe in that Falcons game and he was making guys miss he looked good in the open field so against a defense like New Orleans where you can use all of the uh, yards after catch you can get against a defense like this this has to be the game where they utilize or utilize um, Kadarius Tony. And if they put Marshawn Lattimore on Kenny Galladay, and Lattimore is one of the better cornerbacks in football, you have to worry about them like doubling or taking or taking Galladay out of the game. And some other receiver on the Giants will have to step up, whether that's Colin Johnson, whether that's Kadarius Tony, or even Evan Engram. This might be a game where Evan Engram sees low key a, a high amount of targets. Like he might get nine, ten targets in this game, Engram. What does he do with them? I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't drop it or, or fumble the ball again. But this may be a game where they have to have to throw the ball to Ingram over the middle of the field. So it's definitely a possibility. So this is the first game in New Orleans this season. As I mentioned, they had to play in Jacksonville in week one due to the hurricane. But now they're back in New Orleans and those fans are very loud. And that stadium is very loud. So it's not the best place to play, especially for, you know, Saints fans that have not had a home game yet this year. So the Giants kind of got a, uh, a bad draw there for sure. So the coaching advantages, yes, the, the coaching advantage sure as hell goes to the Saints. I just mentioned Sean Payton and how 
prepared and, and how great he looks as a coach. And he, he's been that way for a long time, gets the most out of his quarterbacks. Jameis Winston, you can say what you want about him. He's a talented guy. He went number one overall for a reason. His highlight tape is very impressive. Yes, he'll make some very dumb decisions, but he's a, a good quarterback for the most part. Very talented, I will say. So the coaching advantage definitely is in the favor of the Saints based on what we've seen so far from Joe Judge, even Patrick Graham, and of course, Jason Garrett. So I will give the Saints the advantage there. And the Giants, of course, are in another must-win game. I said it last week. They had to win it. They lost it. They really have to win this game. And you know what? It would be the most Giants thing ever to win a game like this when all the fans are kind of out on them. I know there are some fans that still have hope that we can win this game and kind of, uh, you know, just, just... find a way to make the playoffs this year although it's probably not that possible but you know it's only week four anything can happen I guess but this team is going to face a lot of tough teams here coming up in the near future so I am definitely concerned as a fan but it would be the most Giants thing ever to go out there and win that game on Sunday so here's how I think the Giants could win this game number one as I said before use Daniel Jones's legs there was no read options last week and it was very stupid because it worked very well against Washington in week two they have to get back to that I don't know why they didn't do it last week but get back to it and the Giants defense has to step up in this game the Giants defense has to hold the Saints offense to like under 14 points I don't think we're scoring much on Sunday. Honestly, I don't I don't see the Giants scoring over 20. I'd be surprised if they do. So the Giants defense really has to be close to perfect in this game, I will say. And number three for me, Jameis Winston has to make a mistake or two. And I'm talking like a big mistake, like a, a fumble in his own territory or like, you know, a big interception. Jameis Winston has to have those bad plays that we see from him sometimes. But the problem is Jameis Winston makes his worst decisions when he's under duress and under pressure. That's the the you know that that's how it goes for most quarterbacks, of course. But when Jameis Winston has pressure in his face consistently, that's when he makes bad decisions. I've seen it all the time with Jameis. But the Giants don't have much of a pass rush. That's my concern. Now the Saints, as I said, they may have two really good offensive linemen out this game. That would definitely help the Giants. But the Giants don't have much of a pass rush. And Jameis Winston, say what you want about him, his pocket awareness and the way he can maneuver the pocket is pretty impressive sometimes he gets out of a lot of sticky situations so just because you have a guy in the backfield that's on an automatic sack when Jameis is the quarterback he ducks underneath guys and finds a way to just get out of some very sticky situations once again so yeah the the Giants have to get consistent pressure on defense I don't know if they will because we haven't seen it so far this year but Patrick Graham has to have hell of a game here if the Giants want to win so the Giants got to keep it low scoring force Jameis in a turnover or two and use Daniel Jones's legs because once again I don't know how much you're gonna pass against this great secondary I I don't know I'm trying to be realistic here but like that's that's just the way it is the Saints have an awesome secondary they're great against the run you know top two in the NFL as I mentioned before it's not gonna be easy and if the Giants score over 20 points offensively I will be very impressed with Daniel Jones and Jason Garrett because that's a pretty good offensive uh you know performance against a defense like this so once again, must win. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, of course, Dallas is in first place right now. They play the Panthers, another NFC South team. We'll play them later this year. Um, but yeah, we got to win this game for sure. I mean, if, if they go 0-4 and then go into, um, you know, a game with, uh, who do they play next? The Cowboys and the Rams. I mean, this could get out of hand very quickly, as we know, and it probably is already. But um, if they can somehow go to New Orleans and beat the Saints, which I don't think I've seen the Giants beat the Saints in my lifetime in New Orleans. I remember a game in 2015, of course, in that high, you know, shootout game where Manning and Drew Brees combined for like, uh, what was it, nine touchdowns, 10, 11, whatever the hell it was, that crazy shootout game where Brad Wing had a face mask and we lost on a game-winning field goal, always happens with the Giants. And there was one in like 20, uh, what was it, 2010, 2011, might have been their Super Bowl year, honestly. But there was a game where, I think it was a Super Bowl year, yeah, 2011, where I think the Saints put up like 48 points against us. It was like 48-35. The game was over by like halftime. So yeah, I I don't have good memories in New Orleans as a Giants fan, but hopefully this time they can turn it around. And we played them back in 2018, and they beat us uh, at home. So that wasn't very good either, but it was a closer. It was a closer game. It wasn't as bad, so I will say that. Anyway... Hopefully they get it done. I don't know if they will. Um, You know, I'm still rooting for them to win. It's not late enough in the season where I'm worrying about the draft yet. I have no idea who I want in the draft, and I don't really care about the whole draft position yet. Um, It's too early. We're barely in October. Got to get some wins here. Got to stack them up. And I know one and three is not good, but it sure is. It's a lot better than one and four. So they got to find a way to get it done. So we'll see what happens. Leave in the comments. You know, do you think they win this week? Leave a final score if you want, and I'll talk to you guys next time.